What is up everybody? Welcome to Jamestown. I'm James, this is Rue, and today we're gonna teach you exactly the best and worst ways to find motivated sellers. Now I found every single one of my wholesale deals using the same method and it is the only method that I use. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you know exactly what you should be doing to get your first deal. Let's get into it. All right, so to start things off, we're gonna go with a method that I would recommend never doing. And that is driving for dollars. So let me ask you a question. When you pay your cell phone bill, do you pay it online? Or do you drive to the AT&T or Verizon store and pay it at the store? Go ahead, I'll wait. Yeah, 100% of you just said that you pay it online. And why do you pay it online? It's because no sane individual is gonna waste time, gas, and energy to do something that they could do instantly and conveniently from their couch. So how come nobody applies this logic to wholesaling? All right, so let's say I were to drive for dollars for three hours and find 20 properties. I would still need to go home, look up all the information on the properties, and most of those would end up being bad deals or dead leads anyways. So now you're, so now you're down four to five hours of time, 10 to $15 in gas, and you've accomplished literally nothing. And driving for dollars is especially bad advice for beginners because you don't even know what the hell you're looking for. You have limited time, limited resources, and you need to be using those to get your first deal. Now, the only reason I can think that people keep recommending driving for dollars is for beginners is it's some sort of hazing or something. All right, and that brings us to method number two, and that is the ever infamous bandit sign. Now, a bandit sign is the stupid signs you see around your town that say, we buy houses cash, we'll buy your ugly house, blah, blah, freaking blah. Now, similarly to driving for dollars, putting up bandit signs requires you to leave the house. So for me, that's gonna be a resounding no, but let's play it out. While it's better than driving for dollars because you only need to leave the house to put up the sign once and then it'll stay up for as long as the cops or the weather or your friendly neighborhood asshole allow it to stay up. But the main point is that for beginners, it is just another stupid excuse for you to waste time in your car driving around instead of on the phone closing deals. All right, now we are getting into some positive recommendations, starting with method number three, which is finding motivated sellers in Facebook groups, as well as using on-market sites such as Redfin and Zillow. Now, I know a lot of investors have had some decent success starting with on-market, but for me, I lost $850 in earnest money, as well as got zero deals. Well, the problem with on-market, in my opinion, is the fact that A, everybody can see the deals because they're on-market and there's a giant amount of competition. Secondly, there's real estate agents involved. Real estate agents want earnest money deposits, so you can't get around that. And real estate agents also need to use their contracts, and they're gonna nitpick your contracts to the point where you're not gonna be able to use them. Now, me and my partner who started my business, we started with $1,000, which was all of both of our money. So after losing the 850, I was left with 150, as well as he gave up, so I used that 150 to do the next method, which ended up saving my business. All right, so last but not least is the one and only method that I've used to find all of my wholesale deals so far, and that is a lead database search. Now, the databases include Flipster, Batch Leads, and Propster. For me personally, I use Propster. Now, there's a link to a free trial down below in the description, but if you end up paying for Propstream using my link, I will hook you up with a free one hour training session over Zoom where I will teach you exactly how I use PropStream. I will help you pull lead lists and I'll set you up for success going forwards. Now I've actually tried Flipster for about a month and dabbled in batch leads and while they're both okay, PropStream had a better user interface, provided me with better data and I also consider PropStream to be more like a Swiss army knife. PropStream allows me to pull leads of motivated sellers, skip trace those leads as well as run comps on all the houses. PropStream can literally do it all. All right, so now let's go over how I use the database. So I break motivated sellers down into three groups, which range on how motivated they are. Now, first, the most motivated sellers are people that are about to lose their property, whether this be to foreclosure, back taxes, or anything in between. They got two options. Either they sell their property to you, or they lose their property for nothing and have a foreclosure on their record. Now the second most motivated sellers or the middle motivated sellers as I call them are people that don't live in the property. So either the property is vacant or they rent it out to a tenant. Now these people are a little bit more motivated because if they do sell you their house, they don't have to go find anywhere else to live. So it makes it a little bit easier for them to let it go. Now the least motivated type of sellers are ones that live in the property. Now they may be motivated because of a divorce, they own the property free and clear, or they've lived there for 30 years, but if they sold it to you, they'd have to find a new place to live, which makes it a little bit harder for them to let go. 
So I like to tackle the most motivated sellers first. So let's hop over my shoulder, dive into PropStream, and I'll show you how I attack pre-foreclosures. Okay, so you open up PropStream. Here's the United States. Click search. Pick which market you want. So me, I like to tackle Chicago quite frequently. So let's narrow it down to Chicago. All right, so Chicago looks like it's got almost a million unique properties. So we said we're going for pre-foreclosures because those are the most motivated first. So let's get into our filter. Quick list choice, pre-foreclosure. All right, now I go down the line and you guys can see the filters I generally like to use. So I like to make sure it's a residential property. I like to make sure it's a single family, condo or townhouse, or a multifamily. Now I'm not trying to get vacant land here. All right. So that's usually all I require for the property characteristics. Now, MLS status. We want to make sure that it's not on market. We want to find off market properties. A lot of people get in pre foreclosure and then they go listed on the market, but those are usually houses that don't need any work. They can get retail value for them. Not good leads for us. So not only do we not want them to be on market, but I want them to have never been listed on the market. Okay. Then as we go down to the pre foreclosure details, as you can see, some of these, um, like this one over here on the right is in auction. It actually sold today at auction. So, or yesterday at auction. So those are gonna be no good. So we wanna to go to the pre-foreclosure status and make sure that auctions is not checked. We just want notices of default, no auctions. All right, and then we want people that have been in pre-foreclosure, let's say since June. All right, so it's a little bit more recent. Then go down to the ownership info. <clears throat> I don't want people that just bought their house. I want them to have owned it for at least a couple years. So minimum length of ownership, three years. And then I don't want people that have a bunch of rentals because they have a lot of ways they can refinance, get out of their pre-foreclosure, and you know they're not as in need of our help. So then we would go to people that only own up to three properties. We don't want any real estate moguls here because they're not going to be motivated to sell whether or not they're in default. All right. And then the last thing I like to do is go to the valuation and equity info to make sure that there's actually equity in the deal for us to make some money. So let's say estimated equity, you want at least 50% and boom. All right. So here is all of our filters on this list. We'll hit close. We got 184 unique properties that match that. Okay. So you usually would wanna go in and check a couple of the properties to make sure that the info is okay and you didn't miss any filters that you might wanna use. Um, right, this one, for example, you know, the estimated mortgage balance is, is 233. So let's say you were to offer them 300,000. So now they get to walk away, make over $60,000, and then you still have almost $200,000 in equity to make money on the deal. That's a perfect deal. So let's say you, you know, you check your list and it's good. So you'll click this for all the properties and then you'll hit add to list. So now we're going to be creating a list of properties that's going to be saved. So we'll say Chicago pre foreclosures, eight, 30, 22, save. All right. And now you just pulled your list of leads. As you can see, it took me three minutes maybe, <clears throat> and you've got your leads. So those will now go down into your properties say Chicago pre foreclosures. All right, here's our list of 184. Now we click this to select all of them again, because they're in our properties, but they're not in our context yet because we have not skip traced them. Hit new campaign, skip tracing, 12 cents a lead, hit next. As you can see, it, it narrowed those 180 or whatever down to 50 because I had already skip traced a bunch of them because I like to hit Chicago a lot. So you would hit place order, skip trace your leads it takes a couple of hours once they're done it filters them down into your contacts so then you would go down and they would be in your contacts so let's say for example this was them now they're all got um, emails phone numbers etc click all of them to select all of them again and this time you're going to hit export and it exports it into an excel file now that excel file is going to look like this I can get it over here. Excel file is going to look like this. Now let me show you guys how I turn this into a lead sheet that I then send to my virtual assistants for them to start texting. Okay. So I like to only keep a few of these columns of information. So 
I get rid of the company. The, um, the type, the status. I keep the street address and the city. I don't need the state, the zip. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. None of this. I don't even keep the landlines because I only text, so I need cell phones. And then I get rid of all the secondary and third numbers. I don't use the emails, nothing. All right. So I delete all that information and it leaves me with just what I need. Their first name, their last name, their address, and their cell phone number. That's it. All right. Then I select all of these, copy, and we go back over here. And then I usually go to a Google Sheets doc because that is shared and I can share it with my uh, virtual assistants. And then boom, set it up like this. All right. And then this is the exact sheet that my virtual assistants would then work off of. We keep our scripts. I write the scripts in right here. Hi, my name is James. I'll copy all the scripts from my old lead sheet, put them into here. And then, you know, usually I would have a list of like a thousand. This is just an example. And then I would go through and start texting them just like this. And that's it. It only took me about five minutes and I got an entire clean, organized sheet of leads. So that's how I pull pre-foreclosure leads. Now over half the deals that I've done so far have been from pre-foreclosures, so I love to attack them whenever they're available. If you wanna get my exact scripts that I use when I'm texting pre-foreclosures, then subscribe, comment scripts please down below, and I will get you taken care of. Now we're gonna move on to the middle motivated sellers, which are the non-owner occupieds or the vacants or rented out. So let's go back into PropStream and I'll show you how I take those down. All right, so now we're gonna jump back into prop stream, do the tired landlord. So again, let's say we're gonna hit Chicago again. All right, so now instead of going to pre-foreclosures right here, we're just gonna go down to tired landlords. Boom. Now again, we wanna make sure that we're hitting residential. Let's say you're only interested in chasing single family homes. Um, say you want them to own it for 20 years, that adds a little bit more motivation than somebody that has owned it for 10, okay? And then last but not least, we wanna make sure we got some equity. Let's say we want at least 30% equity in the deal. All right, so that is gonna leave us with 1,800 unique properties. Now, just like we did with the pre-foreclosures, we're gonna select all of them, add them to a list. From there, they'll be in our properties, select them, add them to skip tracing, then they'll be in our contacts, take them from contacts and export them. And then you end up with your lead sheet. Now this is my exit, this is my actual tire landlord lead sheet here that I'm currently working on. As you can see, it's from 821. Um, and this is what it looks like. And this is what I give to my virtual assistant. And then they just go ahead and start hammering out the text. And that's it. And don't forget that if you sign up for PropStream using my link in the description, I will give you a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour long training session where I will go through all of this with you, show you how I use PropStream. I'll even give you my, uh, my saved searches right here. And you can save them to your PropStream so that going forward in the future, you can just keep pulling the new lists from any town you want exactly the same way I do, exactly how I got all my deals. And that's so it. if you guys pull lists like that a few times a week, follow my text methods and scripts, don't drive around in your freaking car wasting hours and pull some pre-foreclosure lists, you have no reason not to close your first deal, if not two, in your first month. Just while you're doing that and closing those first two deals, make sure you're keeping this process going and keeping new deals coming in behind them because it is about building a wholesale business and not chasing singular deals. Now you guys know exactly what to do and what not to waste time on so you can close your first couple deals. Again, if you want a free hour long one-on-one -on -one training session in Jamestown, where I will show you how I use PropStream, I will pull lists for you as well as set you up for success going forwards, then sign up for PropStream using my link down in the description comment let me know what you guys have been doing to find motivated sellers subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when i drop more gems like this you're in jamestown now baby relax take some notes and let's make some fucking money